Hey everyone, this is Blackbinder, and welcome back to the Let's Play of Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire. Last episode, we finished off with all the optional areas on Crookspur Island, and now I've made my way back to Captain Aldous, and let's see what she has to say about it. I see you're still alive. She gives you a crooked grin. Well, what can I do, you lovesome? Crookspur's a done deal. Aye, and well done, too. Most of the prisoners have pledged to cruise in my fleet. You did a fine thing, Captain. Don't think I'll soon forget it. She rubs her thumb over the swollen net around her neck, miscolored eyes looking you up and down. Her lips quirk in a sm sly smile. You're real good for business. So, here's to hoping our wakes cross again someday. Black Blades Hood and 16,800 experience. Nice. All right, Hawkeye, plus one perception, 5% of hits converted to crits with ranged weapons. Awesome. 10% uh, action speed with daggers, rapiers, and stilettos, which isn't very good for me, but that's fine. Until then... You can trust that I'll be in touch when I need you. She tips her hat obligingly, then downs a gullet, uh, goblet of God's Killer Rum that had been sitting on the desk behind her. Let's look. What's our hat do? Five ranged accuracy. Hmm. That's about really the same thing. Five percent of hits converted to crits, or five accuracy. I think I'm going to stay with the shootest. Allow me to tip my cup to a beautiful friendship and a fine captain. I. What can I do you? All right, let's get out of here. Now, I think uh, I checked in my journal. We have a lot of bounty turn-ins and like Nekataka and um, but I don't want to go there just yet. I think we should start Harbinger's Watch because it's no longer a one school area. It's just a regular difficulty quest. So I think that's what, where we're going to go next. Which is all the way to the bottom, the southeast, if I remember correctly. Southeast even of Port Maja. Port Maja. But that'll be fun because usually DLCs have more inventive items for you. Alright, where is it exactly? Yep, Harbinger's Watch is all the way over there. Jeez, this is a huge fog of war. You know what? We might not even make it there because we're gonna... I'm gonna search all of these places. Or I'm gonna try to get a lot of fog of war discovered, if, if is what I mean. We are running somewhat low on food. We've got 154 in there right now, but we don't have much left to once that runs out. So the next time we find a Valian trading mill or something, we'll have to buy the stuff there. Feels like I'm playing Civilization V. Trying to discover all the ocean, whatever. The ocean tiles. significantly far you hear two crew members arguing on the deck an argument from the deck pulls your attention away from the gentle rocking of the ship and the smooth expanse of a blue of blue on the ocean half of those fish were floating belly up cries Yemieni. better we throw out the whole catch than end up with a rot-bellied crew they look they looked alive enough when we hauled them out little leuka retorts gesturing violently at the pile of fish on the deck fish die when you pull them out of the water that's what fish do Check the fish for signs of disease. Disease. Let's judge the fitness of this catch. No, let's ask Mesta. What do you think, Mesta? Mesta sniffs at the fish, then turns up their nose at the barrel. I mean, any size. Seems Mesta's got more between their ears than some of our fellow soldiers. Check the fish for signs of disease. Um, we'll have to go show tea. Success. Several of the fish display discolored scales and bloated bellies. Clear signs of disease. It's possible their meat could sicken the crew. Uh, the fish go back in the sea. I won't risk the crew's health. How much did we lose? Doesn't say. How far are we over? Yep, plenty far enough. Let's uh, cut this fog of war off and and see if there's any islands hiding away from us. 
What is this? The trench? Something trench? The Valian Trench. Oh, there's a storm. Stay out of its way. A plagued ship. Let's save it before we get on, get on there. On the horizon, a ship comes into view. Its sails furled. The ship lists upon the water. Plague ship, Vector cries out from the fore. Finger jabbing skyward, indicating a green flag billowing lazily in the breeze on the ship's main mast. Oswald leans in close. We should be careful, Captain, or we'll catch whatever took hold of those poor souls. Still, there might be something worthwhile on board. The crew steals glances at you to catch a hint of how you're inclined to proceed. Maybe we can help. If we can't cure them, we could at least give them a merciful death. Even without a spyglass, you can espy a few living crew moving about above deck. Use the spyglass. You survey the deck of the ship. A few deckhands appear to be taking stock of some cargo. Pale to the last, they appear exhausted, their clothes drenched in sweat. Uh, Alright, pull alongside. The crew guides your ship next to the plague vessel. The deckhands and captain appear shocked and apprehensive. Highly as mercy. I didn't think anyone would come to our aid. The deckhands stand tall, but their unsteady posture portrays the sickness that seems to have affected them all. Uh, call for the sickest sailor from your crew. We will bring them aboard, examine them, and provide suitable remedies. What are your people afflicted by? It's not killed anyone. Rimmergon look, Rimmergon look away, but it saps our strength and has quickly spread throughout the crew. It sounds like dysentery. Uh, call forth your sickest sailor from your crew. We will bring them aboard, examine them, and provide suitable remedies. What? Giordo red-handed cries out. No one else in the crew says anything loudly enough to decipher, but their mumbling suggests they're unhappy about bringing a sick, sick crew member aboard. We lost five morale. That's okay. As the sailor shuffles from the plague ship to yours, your crew clears a broad path. Some make warding signs or mutter prayers to Rimmergond while the sick man passes. I can't thank you enough, the captain says. Without your help, who knows how long we we would have been here. He offers you a small box. Take this, please, a token of my appreciation. Keep it. You'll need whatever it is more than I do. After a short period of examination, the sick sailor returns to his ship with enough remedies to treat the rest of the crew. Weary but hopeful, they wave goodbye as your ship continues on its way. Lost some medicine, but we gained some experience. As your man's sail goes up, you head into open water. Coin counter Fuldus lets out a raspy cough and looks around nervously. The rest of the crew grits their teeth and mutter cur mutters curses. It appears the sickness has spread to your ship. That's fine, it's obviously not that bad. Sounds like dysentery. But, I mean, dysentery is treatable. The problem is if you don't treat it. It's a downward spiral into fatigue, exhaustion, and death. Tahe. What is Tahe? He sounds like a, a bounty. Alright, Adair. Go get him. Everybody else, work on the imps. <laughs> you guys are no match for a dare. Let's clear out. See what. See if we can't uh, kill them or knock them down. I think that's what it does. I'm gonna have Seraphin Mind Blade just for fun. Me and Mesta will work on the sea troll while everybody else takes out Tehe. Gonna consecrated ground just to make sure no one dies and then Mind Blade again. Not bad. I don't remember Mind Blade being this good. Or this usable. I mean, it's not amazing, but it is decent. Tears of Saint Makawo. Plus one armor rating against spells and grants martyrs memories. The caster becomes petrified and untargetable for a brief time. So, untargetable for 12 seconds. So why does it lower the damage taken if we are untargetable? What would be the point? AoE, maybe? Tahe. Hmm. I think that was a bounty. The Tiatara Marvel. Nope, we need food. Grab the fresh fruit. The sea here is vast and s as smooth as cyan glass. Or cyan. I don't know. Jumping up and down, little Leuka shouts and points to port at 
points the port at the pale of pillar o luminous Audra rising from beneath the surface of the water. Veidil takes you closer. M much of the stone is encrusted with coral, but the visible portions coil above the water in long looping spirals. Audra normally grows in large pillars, but this formation looks almost like seven tentacles of some terrible sea monster grasping for the sky. Vanizi whistles low, so old, had to be in Gwythans. Morale gained five. Ikiak scoffs. Even they couldn't do that. That's Andra's slow, steady work. Even at night, the Audra shimmers, glowing from within and casting a ghostly light across the surface of the sea. Indeed, it's hard to tell whether the Audra's strained contours have been shaped by slow wear of the sea or distorted by it. And something about the ambiguity makes the vision all the more extraordinary. The rest of the crew chimes in, debating the wonder's meaning and the and origins in low, odd voices. There's no way to know where it came from. Enjoy it for whatever it is. Vanizi nods while Ikiak murmurs a quiet prayer. The remainder of the crew nod and return to their duties. Beidol sails past the Audra, maintaining a safe distance. Little Leuka and Ikiak move to the aft castle, eyes locked on the Tiatara Marvel, or Marvel, until it disappears below the horizon. We got some experience, not very much, but it also... There was literally no danger involved, so. This is the Wakara Reef. We actually have been here before, I think. Let's uh, buy some food at this rice farm. Buy it all, I guess, since there's they barely have any. Got some flotsam over here. Medical supplies. The Tahika fishing pools. You stand on the forecastle, gazing out at clear skies and gentle seas. The chattering of your crew darkens, adopting an ominous tone. Gathered at the starboard railing, they peer out at the sea. By the gods, Emmy and he mutters, the surface of the sea swells. An enormous glowing shape is surfacing. Identify it. Uh, I will. There's only one breed of glowing sea life of this size to your knowledge, the resplendent phantom. Their sweet flesh makes them a popular quarry among whale hunters. Ugh. Whales are one of my most feared things. Specifically for this reason, if you were out in a boat or something and you saw a huge shadow just engulf you. Ugh. Makes me shiver just thinking about it. A long, pale creature breaks the surface of the water. Its skin is translucent and freckled with phosphorescence. And you can make out the ghostly outlines of luminous organs beneath it. The creature rolls slowly, staring back at you with a glowing blue eye. The nerve behind it is as thick as a hall halyard. Chitupak smiles. This one is young, still. Thoughts, crew? Emmy, any blah, blah, blah. Prize like that could feed us for days. Uh, quarry worthy of the lord of the hunt. Let's have some excitement, captain. We'll let the creature go in peace. It makes Adair happy, at least, but everyone else is mad. Yet the magnificent creature continues alongside your ship for many hours. A low, mournful music rises above the light percussion of the waves, and a gentle peace envelops your crew. When night falls, the beast is beside you still, a comforting light in the darkness. By morning it is gone, but the sense of calm it brought remains. So, more experience. Morale for experience. Whales are scary, but I'm not going to kill them just because I would kill one if I was hungry, but I'm not hungry, so. Alright, sickness racks your crew. Well, we knew helping them was going to hurt us, but that's fine. The illness starts slow, a cough here, the shakes there, but then it hits the crew hard and fast, washing across the deck like a rogue wave. Within a day, not a single member of the crew can breathe easily. Each coughs, each coughs their throat raw, sp uh, spitting bloody globs, globs of phlegm into the sea. Gross. Lose, we lost morale. Oswald finds you in your cavern. Through the open window, you can make out the sound of one of your sailors retching violently. If this keeps up, Captain, your crew will be in no state to sail. They hardly are as it is. Find the ship's surgeon. Care to tell me why everyone on my boat is sick, Shield Master Dahlia? It's the Swabby's hack, Captain. I suspect we caught it from that plague ship. It's not likely to kill anyone, but it can leave Kith weak and prone to accident. What would you have me do? 
Best thing to do would be to medicate. Hopefully we've got the stores to treat everyone. Yeah, we should. Break out the medical medicinal stores. Everyone gets what they need until this clears up. Under Shield Master Dahlia's direction, the hands open up the packages of aromatic herbs and mash the leaves up with a pestle with pestle and mortar. Soon each member of the crew wears a swath of fragrant paste slathered across their chest. With the correct remedy applied, the crew quickly recovers. Soon they're on the deck, belting shanties towards the horizon. You sail on. And we actually gained five morale overall from that. Uh, well, no, because we lost five in the beginning, and then we lost five there. And then we gained ten, so we broke even. Alright. Let's keep going. Onward to Harbinger's Watch. Now we will we'll go all the way to Harbinger's Watch and then cut south. Or at least we'll go to the the column that uh, Harbinger's Watch stands on. What is wrong with this place? Oh, it's a volcanic island. Lots of goodies there, though. Shadowed Veil. Vale, uh, an abandoned camp. Can we get on there? You find two of your crew members playing a game in the hold. We need to win it two more times, I think, to get our whatever. Our trait. Crap. He got him on the nose. Uh, take aim at the Orland's nose. 10 to 10. Let's aim for the ears. We got the nose again. We'll go ears again. So we got 21 points. Not bad. We need one more. One more win, because I think in the last game you had to win three times in a row to get a special trait. There we go. That's how we get. I was gonna. I was wondering how we could get on the island. What is that thing? Maybe we're just not close enough to see. Hall of the Unseen. Cool. Who would build their temple on a volcanically unstable land? Are you telling me we can't get there? What the hell, man? Maybe we have to go this way. The land here is shattered and barren, eerily quiet, with jagged hill hillocks plunging abruptly into the calm, clear seas. No birds fly above, and you've not spotted the first boar, rat, or lizard. By comparison, the camp ahead positively bustles. Horses are tied to tied off to stakes. A robed figure, cow pulled over his, its head, sits upon a crate, and the scent of a hearty stew wafts from the pot hanging over the small campfire. Let's approach them openly. As you advance, the flaps on two of the closer tents open, disgor disgorging a lithe wood elf in a deer and finery, a bulky Amwa with cerulean skin, and one of the savannah folk, who levels a large crossbow at your heart. Not another step, stranger, he says. The elf smiles warmly at you, rather mixing the message. The robed figure within the camp makes no movement at all. We're not here to cause trouble. The Adiran woman bows slightly at the waist, brown hair falling over her face in loose curls. In that case, who are we to keep you from our company? Please join us by our fire, she gestures to the camp. The trio guide you among the tents. There seem, there seem too many for the few kith you see about. The elf graciously offers you a seat at the fire. The robed figure makes no apparent notice of your arrival, their cowl casting their visage in impenetrable shadow. We have soup, the Amala says. Stew, really, and you're welcome to make use of our tents if you'd care to rest. Do you know much about this chain of islands? While the Amoa shakes his head and says very little, the, Ad the Adarin grins and answers a thing or two. Why, asks the, dus the, dus the dusky human. The geography here, it's like the land has been twisted or broken by some great power. The Adarin nods. Perhaps it has. A great cataclysm shook this realm in ages past. The Amoa shakes his head, but there's not much we can tell you about it. Who's your hooded friend? The woman laughs lightly. Just that. Perhaps you should ask yourself. Approach and look under the hood. You approach a figure who makes no move. Each step takes you closer, yet somehow also further away. The crossing seems to take minutes, and the campfire falls away to your periphery, yet you can't stop. Bending low, you peer up under the hood into the face within. The face of Handsome Elium from the Penetrator. What? Why would he be here? Handsome Elium, what are you doing here? Handsome Elium raised an eyebrow. Why wouldn't I be here, Captain? The hand's voice sounds unusually even and quiet, as if echoing from deep within a deep pit. 
You shudder, no, the ground shudders, or the air. The dirt churns beneath your feet, and your stomach leaps into your throat as the ground opens beneath you. You plunge into darkness. Some kind of cipher? When you wake, the ground is bare. No tents, no horses, no traces, even, of a campfire. What the hell was that? Got some food, hardtack. That was weird. Maybe it has something to do with the Hall of the Unseen. Looks like there is something here, but I can't click on it, so I guess we'll just go to the Hall of the Unseen. After an arduous journey, you finally reach the center of the volcanic devastation. Before you is a broad-faced stone building rugged with age. The Eye of Whale, solitary and all-seeing, all is emblazoned above the door. You approach the door. Though clearly made only of stone, you feel the burn of the eye's regard between your eyes. Uh, the door swings open without a sound and reveals a dark, narrow staircase winding down into the earth. This is uh, creepy. But cool. Click that open the door. So it's right, right, left. No, wait. Right, left, left, straight. Oh, hell. I'm lost already. guessing it's a maze that open yeah each one of these opens and closes a door ooh a trap what no freaking way i can't disarm that where's my guy i want you to disarm it i don't know why it was using an adair that was weird Nope, that closed that. So I need to reopen it. Pretty easy maze, just click on everything as you go. Why does it keep doing that? Use the guy who has good trap disarm. Jeez. Potion of insubstantial form. 25% of incoming crits converted to hits, grazes converted to misses, and hits converted to grazes. Send Seraphin back. There we go. But we also can't get Seraphin back in here. That's okay. Pickaxe? Yeah, let's we'll just, just pickaxe our way through. We can find our way back out. It's like we need to leave another person behind. We'll go ally. There it is. We are almost there. And then we'll leave Shoti in the back, I guess? Or just be me, Adair, and my my hound, or my bear. What did this one open?
I want to open the dang door. One of these has got to open it. There it is. Alright, now what's going to be in here? Oh my god. They're all shades and specters too. That's not good. Alright, what do we want to do here? I need to get my guys up here, like in the way. That way I can escape with this one, with my guy. Stop. I cannot have you get a cooldown. Alright. Jump over here. That should be... Give me enough room. We need to take out the shade. Let's go consecrated ground just to make sure... Just to make sure uh, we stay topped up. Then we will do the bouncy attack. All right, one shade down. Spectre down. All right, that was a pretty easy fight, I guess. Shades always give me a worry because one of the first fights that you can get into in the first game deals with a shade and it just kicks your butt. Wow, more than one shade. All right, that opened everything it looks like. Scroll of the Gaze of Adragon. This was a very good spell in the first one because paralyzed, I guess it makes you more likely to crit in this one, but in the first time it increased your damage by quite a bit just straight up made you do more damage. At first it was four times, I believe, and then they nerfed it to only two times the damage. All right, what does the Eye of Whale do? It's superb obf obfuscation. 10% chance to become invisible for eight seconds on scoring a critical hit. 5% chance to cast a random illusion spell on target on scoring a hit. That's actually pretty good. Reread the books not yet written. We see beyond the shroud of death. We seek the heart of all knowledge. We walk on the plains on plains beyond. Defy the wheel, defy death. Take the seal, the eye, the mark, awaken. Inscribed along the shaft of the scepter is the phrase esoterica proliferata. So proliferate the esoteric. So the stuff people don't normally know. Spread uh, unknown truths, I think, is what it sounds like to me. Cast a random defensive illusion spell when the caster becomes bloodied. 100 vision, plus 2 to all illusion power levels. Lidless gaze. Uh, whale watches with countless eyes. Cast a gaze spell in an area, petrifying or terrifying enemies. <laughs> That's pretty good. It's first will. 10% chance to cast a random affliction on target on scoring crit. So these are both pretty good. What does this one do again? Man. Gonna be hard to choose. We'll stick with this one now because we get higher accuracy. And then if I want to cast the per rest spells, I'll just switch weapons. <sighs> Did we discover something? No, that was just the background music. It's a weird out of the way temple, but cool. I want to know who those people were though. All right, what do we want to call it? Um, Island of Whale. Because there's a temple to whale on it, so might as well call it that. Alright, onwards. Where are we going now? Keep going straight down. No, nope, you get away from me. I don't want to fight you. A derelict ship. 
All right. A knock at your cabin door interrupts your reading. Oswald stands outside, looking like someone who's just lost the bet. Captain, you'd best come topside. There's a ship on the horizon. Looks derelict. Oswald leads you up to the forecastle, where a small gaggle of hands have gathered. Pawing at a holy symbol, Chitupek points towards port. It's a bad omen, Captain. We should give them over to the Lady of Lament, or there will be trouble. Mark my words. Emiani chuckles. We don't even know if they're dead, much less what fills their holds. And you want to sink them? Seraphin shakes his head at Emiani. Oswald ain't farting out at the mouth. Disease or no, a ship dead at sea ain't off, and nothing but trouble. We'll use the spyglass. You pull out your spyglass and examine the derelict. Nothing moves above deck, and you spot a corpse sprawled out on the forecastle. A few more seconds' examination reveals another further aft. Beneath the plague sim signal, you see a flag depicting a lit candle in an open doorway. You recognize it as an emblem of the kind wayfarers. I dropped the... Address the ship's surgeon. Your thoughts, S.H.I.E.L.D. Sister Dahlia? No one has signaled. Anyone on that ship is likely beyond help. That ship is a hazard, Captain, and not just to any who come across it. Not to tell you your business, but I'd advise sinking it before someone gets it in their heads to board it. I'm going aboard. <laughs> With a shake of the head, Emiani smirks. I can't say our captain lacks for guts. If there's anyone I can help over there, I have to try. Very well, Captain, Oswald says grimly before running to prepare the skiff. You row out to the ship and lash the skiff in place, hearing nothing save the creaking of wood and the gentle lapping of the sea. You climb aboard, and the first thing to greet you on the mid-deck are a pair of corpses dressed in simple breastplates. What little flesh they retain has shriveled tight against their bones, and the sun has bleached the exposed portions of their skulls. Sickness is a fact of life, both for crops and people, I know it, but that doesn't mean I like it. Shodi waves her lantern over the corpses, making swift work of her harvest. I do hope whatever killed them has run its course, Alath holds a sleeve to his mouth. There's little else on there's little else on the main deck save tattered sails, but you see the hatch to the hold has been barricaded. Let's enter the hold with our strength. It takes some time, but you manage to clear the blockage and open the hold. The stench of rotting meat and a black cloud of flies pours out. You find several several corpses scattered around the hold. Most of them are wearing the simple garb of red raid sarin farmers, but one is wearing armor, another paladin it seems. Uh, after some searching, you find a sealed barrel of pitch, a few buckets of nails, and a generous length of canvas for patching your sails. We got a physicer's built, a belt. 10% healing and one alchemy, we've seen it before. The crew secures the skiff when you return, but keep their distance from you. Some have tied uh, rags about their faces. Prepare the cannons, send it to the ocean floor. Alright, we gain some morale and uh, practice or experience all right looks like that's where we're gonna end it for today or for this episode anyway i'm gonna make another one right after this so uh all right please leave a like or comment below and feel free to subscribe for more full let's plays like this one and thanks for stopping by